Welcome to my lecture online. Sometimes you're given the equation in a format where it's not clear that it's actually a hyperbola. But one thing gives it away. You do have an x squared and a y squared term. You do have an x to the first and a y to the first term. And there's a negative in front of the y squared. And over here, there's a negative in front of the x squared. That's usually a pretty good indication that it's probably a hyperbola, which means that we're going to try to write it into this format, which makes it easier to graph. So how do we do that? Well, we kind of have the same technique for ellipses, and what we're going to do here is we're going to put some brackets down and separate the x and the y variables like this. So here we're going to write a bracket, x squared minus 12x, leave some room. Now notice there's a negative there and a negative there. I'm going to factor out the negative and put that in the box here. So we have a y squared plus 8y. Again, leave some room. Equals negative 11 because we want the constants over to the right. Okay, now what we need to do is make those perfect squares. So that means we're going to take the middle term, divide by 2, square it, and add it to both sides. So let's do that in some color here on the side. So on the side here, we have the negative 12. We're going to divide that by 2 and square that, which is negative 6, square, which is 36, which means we need to add a 36 over here. And of course, if we add 36 to the left side, we must add 36 to the right. And you know what? Let me use different color for that. That makes it nicer, makes it easier to see what we're doing. So where's my color pen? I lost my color. Oh, there it is. Okay, so plus 36 and plus 36. Okay, we need to do the same over here. We're going to take the middle term, 8. We're going to divide that by 2 and square it. So that's 4 squared, which is 16. That means we want a 16 added over here, so plus 16. But notice, with this negative sign over here, that's actually a negative 16, so we have to subtract 16 from that side as well. Now we can go ahead and write it as a binomial squared. So in this case, this becomes x minus 6 quantity squared minus, here this becomes y plus 4 quantity squared is equal to 20, that would be a positive 9. Okay, now, remember, in the general form, we need a 1 there, so we divide both sides by 9, or 9 is the same as 3 squared, so we can write this as x minus 6 squared divided by 3 squared minus y plus 4 squared divided by 3 squared is equal to 1. And now we have the equation in a format that makes it a lot easier to graph. Let's go ahead and graph it. Well, first of all, we realize we have an offset, h and k are 6 and negative 4. So in the x direction, we're shifted to the right by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And in the y direction, we're shifted down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So right here is the center of the hyperbola at 6 comma negative 4. Now we need a box. We need a box and we know that in the x and the y direction we're going to move 3 to the left, 3 to the right, 3 up and 3 down. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. There we go. We go to the right 3, to the left 3, up 3, down 3. That gives us a nice box like this. Okay, now we need the diagonal lines. Okay, if you want to know where these points are, which is not a bad idea to write those down so that we know what we're doing. So here we have 6 plus 3, which is 9, and negative 4. Here we have 6 minus 3, which is 3, and negative 4. Here we have 6 and negative 4 plus 3, which means we have 6 and negative 1. And here we have 6 and negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So those are the coordinates of the four points that determine the size of the box. Now, which way will open? Notice that the x term is positive, the y term is negative, which means it's going to open up sideways, which means our hyperbola will look like this, like this, this way, oop, not quite, and like this way. So this is not a good asymptote. So let's try this again. There we go. And that is how we draw hyperbola 
if we're given an equation like this. Now we need to do the same over here, but notice in front of the y squared term there's a number 4. That complicates things a little bit. So what we're going to do is we'll do the same thing as we did over there, except we're going to factor out that 4. So we write 4 times y squared plus, instead of 40y, we write plus 10y, and then we'll leave some space for that third term over there. Notice we don't have an x to the first uh, power term, so this becomes minus 25 times x squared is equal to 0. So we only have to worry about this portion right here. So what do we do there? Well, the same as before, and I'm looking for my colored pen. All right, we take half the middle term squared and add it to both sides. So that means 10 divided by 2 squared, which is 5 squared, which is 25, which means we need to add 25 here. But notice that 25 is multiplied times 4, so we essentially added 100 on the left side, so we have to add 100 to the right side, 4 times 25. Now we can write this as a binomial squared, so 4 times y plus 5 squared minus 25x squared is equal to 100. So what we're going to do now is we're going to divide both sides by 100, divide the left side by 100, divide the right side by 100, like this. So now you see that we'll get an equal to 1 on that side. But then also we want to get, we want to get the 4 down here, so the 4 is going to come down here and the 25 is going to come down here. So let me move this equation over here. So now we end up with y plus 5 quantity squared divided by 100 by, divided by 4, which is 25 minus x squared over 4 is equal to 1. And of course 25 is the same as 5 squared and 4 is the same as 2 squared. So now we have it also in the general form, makes it easier to graph. In the x-direction, there's no shift, so it'll be somewhere along the y-axis, but in the y-axis, there's a shift downward of 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's the center of the hyperbola. No shift in the x-direction, but a shift downward of 5 in the y-direction. Now, this here is A, and this here is B. A means we go to the right, the left, 2 units. 1, 2, 1, 2. We draw the points right there. Those points are going to be on the, on the box. And we go up and down five units. So one, two, three, four, five, which is right there. And one, two, three, four, five down like this. And now we have ourselves a nice box. If you want to know where these points are, this point right here is at zero, zero. This point right here is at zero, negative 10. The point right there is at two, negative five. And the point over here is negative two, negative five. Those are the four points determining the size of the box. Now we draw our diagonal lines. Okay, again, if you wonder where, where those points come from, remember the shift up and down, so there's no shift to the right or left, and there's a shift downward of 5 to put the center of the hyperbola. And then this is your A and this is your B, because X associated with A, Y is associated with B. We shift right and left two units, up and down five units. So from here we go to the right two units, so from 0 to 2, and from 0 to negative 2. And from negative 5 to 0, and from negative 5 to negative 10, the shift up and down is 5. Now we need to understand if we're going to open up and down, or left and right. Notice that the y squared term is a positive term, which means the hyperbola will open up and down. That means this is on the hyperbola, go like this, and like this, and over here, go this way, and this way. Don't have a lot of room in the bottom there. But that is how we graph this hyperbola, again, because the y squared term is positive. In that case, the x squared term is positive, so it opens up sideways. Here it opens up, up and down. And that is how it's done. You know, that is such a good question. So what you're asking me here is, how can we tell if an equation is the equation of a hyperbola, an ellipse, or a circle? And actually, there are some very good ways to do that, but 
I think that deserves another video. So let's make a video on that. Because <laughs> that's such a good question. Excellent. I like it. I'm just full of great ideas. You have great ideas. So let's do another video on that topic right there. How can you tell if it's an ellipse, a hyperbola, or, an, or a circle? We'll do so.